Hello and welcome to Gamer to Creator C11 Beginner Tutorials. I'm Chris. So now that we have our Hello World application, let's make this a little more interesting. We're going to add some variables that allow us to manipulate information and data. Here I created two variables. Just like in algebra, they have a name, x equals 22. So now, anywhere in this function, I can use x, and it will be 22. Here I have made y and e equals 45. These are of type integer. Every variable you make in C++ will have a type. That's the part where C++ is a statically typed language. These types must be known at compile time. You can write your own types. More on that later. That would be object-oriented programming. So, we have our two variables, x and y, and we gave them values. But we haven't done anything with these, so they're not very interesting or useful. So, first, Let's output one of these. We'll output x. Instead of our hello world string, we'll output to the console x. And as you can see, the value of x, which is 22, has been printed. x wasn't printed. x is the name of the variable. That's just the id. That's the way you reference this throughout your program. The value was printed of x to the console. And we can do the same with y. Okay. So, let's make this even more interesting. Let's make another integer, and we're going to call it result. And we're going to assign it the value of x plus y. And then we're going to output the value of result. So if x is equal to 22 and y is equal to 45 and we do x plus y and stuff the, the result of this equation into this variable and then print the value of that variable, we get 67. Now, we can make this even more useful. Instead of giving it a, a value in our program, we're going to ask the user to enter a value. So we're going to use input and output to make our application work. Oops. Okay, so here we use the console output and the console input in order to read two integers, x and y, add them together, and then print the result. So while the code has gotten more complicated, the idea behind it is really simple. Ask the user for an x and a y, add them together, and then print it. So let's run through this program really quick. It asks for x, we say uh, 12. y, let's do 44. And then it prints out 56. So you can see this program running line by line. Console out, enter x, 
and then we entered 12 and then sin stuffs 12 into x. This line here, sin.ignore, is a function call that we must call because sin leaves the new line character when you push enter into the, into the buffer. But you don't need to understand that quite yet. Just know that if you use sin like this, you must call this right afterwards. So we do this for x and y. Add them together. Stuff the result into a variable called result. We can name our variables anything we like. As long as they're not a keyword that's already part of C++. And then we output that to the console. Another way to do this is a little bit more complicated, but actually a little less error prone. We're going to create, and you don't need to understand this quite yet. But this way uses the string class to handle the buffer, and then you don't have to do the ignore part. This is actually the proper way, the less error prone and much more um, robust way of doing it. But you don't have to understand this quite yet because it uses functions and classes. Um, and uh, some higher level concepts, but we'll get there. But it, if it, it does the same thing. And I'll prove it to you. 12, what was it, 44? And we get 56 still. Alright, so knowing this, that we can have x and y integers, we now understand that you can create and manipulate variables. And whenever you're using these, you're modifying the value that they represent. And we can do other things. We can multiply instead of plus. Twelve times twelve is a hundred and forty four. We can uh, subtract. One hundred minus ninety equals ten. And we're doing some basic programming. So this is the way it works. Now we're going to talk about other types. These are integer types. They are whole numbers. Okay? Whenever you declare a variable of these types, they will always hold a whole number. One, two, three. They will never hold a dot. Like 1.56, you cannot represent a decimal number with these. But they're important because they are fast. Um, I'm going to write here the size. Now these sizes in C++ on these types are not guaranteed, but this is the general idea. That a char, or a character, char is for short, is one byte. A short is two bytes, an int is four bytes, a long long int is eight bytes. Usually You'll just use an int if you're storing a number, or if you need a really big number, you can use a long int. 
but they all store the same idea, a whole number. Now chars are often used to store strings. If you store a char i, that's one byte, and it's really just a number that represents a character. So these are your whole number base types. There's one other kind of base type, and these are floating point types, also known as decimals. These can have points in them. Now I've declared a float of and called it F and a double called D. A float is four bytes and a double is eight bytes. And these sizes are standard. These sizes are not guaranteed on every single platform to be of this size, but this is the general idea, and these are the correct sizes for Visual Studio. These will always be the correct sizes on any platform. Now, floating point numbers store like 1.56, but they can only store so much accuracy because we're limited by how many bytes that we have. A float has six numbers worth of accuracy. No matter where that uh, decimal is in that number. A double is twice that much. So it's like 12 numbers worth of accuracy. For example, if we had, for a float, if we had 1.8456, we've got this one, 1. Two, three, four, five, six. Anything after this five is junk. It doesn't mean anything. Now, for a double, if we had one, eight, four, five, six, five, we have twice as much. So this is accurate plus that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is how accurate a double can be. Now it doesn't matter where the decimal is. It can be here. This is still as much accuracy as we can get with these numbers. It could be here. It could even be here. Same with float. And so in programming, this is it. This is all you have. Everything is made out of these, even with object-oriented programming. Um, you will build all of your programs out of these types. Now, one thing I want to cover real quick is this line. What is this? Why is it green? And why isn't it doing anything? Well, this is a comment. This slash slash makes everything on this line after the slash slash mean nothing to the compiler. It just goes right over it and completely ignores it. So that allows you to type in whatever the heck you want to make notes to yourself and other people. You know, I'm de declaring all the types in C++. See, and the compiler will just completely ignore this. But this part, because there's no slash slash, I've actually declared a character and called it C and a short and called it S and then called it I. And so forth with the rest of these. And then later on in the line, you can also start a new comment line. And while this is compiled, everything after this is not. So that is our introduction to variables.